Okay. All right. I'm going to start. So, hello. Hi, Gloria. Hi, everyone. For those of you joining us for the first time, the Coalition is the only global network of historic sites, museums, and memory initiatives that connect past struggles to today's movements for human rights and social justice. Founded in 1999, we now have over 275 members in 65 countries from Ellis Island in New York City to former centers of detain detainment in Argentina to sites that remember and learn from the transatlantic trade in West Africa. We support these sites in a variety of ways, including grants, networking, joint programs and training. Uh, and for more information, including how to join the coalition, please visit our website at sitesofconscience.org. So I'm very proud and very happy to introduce our member in the spotlight today, which is the Single Mothers Association of Kenya. And we have today with us uh, Daniel Manyazi, representing Single Mothers Association of Kenya. Uh, Dan is uh, the head of ICT and communications for the organization, and he also has, uh, gives paralegal support to the team, and he has a certificate in law. So I'll hand it over to Daniel, and Dan, go ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you, Gigi. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be here and to talk about gentrification that be, is being uh, experienced here in Nairobi. Uh, we, we are afraid that uh, uh, multinational companies are engaging in real estate development and much of them are not uh, caring about affordable housing. For them, uh, housing has been turned into a commodity of trade and not as a, an essential or a basic need. Uh, due to this, we are seeing that many uh, poor and uh, mid-low income earners being disfranchised from their homes. Uh, neighborhoods very close to the city center are being pushed. Uh, <clears throat> the residents are being pushed far, 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 far away this, to the suburbs because uh, the land by the city center is becoming uh, a hot, it's a hot cake. Everybody wants to stay next to the city where they can ride, they can walk. And for those who cannot afford the new uh, rents are being pushed much, much further away. Uh, this uh, sadly is leading into uh, insecurity. Some of the young people are being pushed away uh, due to desperation, uh, turning into uh, into uh, <coughs> terrorism. You know, people not well educated. They are easily coerced into uh, uh, a terrorism group, a religious intolerance. And we think that this is dangerous, not just, just for us now, but even for the incoming uh, or the coming generation. Many, uh, more than 50% of Kenya's population is under, uh, below the age of 35. And if this don't get proper education, if this don't get uh, maybe love from, from the government, then they end up finding this love elsewhere. And that love is gotten from the extremists. They easily cross to Somalia. There they come armed, you know, bitter. And uh, the repercussion we are seeing is that we are not going to be having a safer country. Our security personnel does not have the capacity to contain such. Currently, we are getting aid, uh, military aid from both the UK and the US. And with that, without such aid, our security personnel cannot contain this young people and uh, maybe from the slides that we have shared with you you can uh, uh, maybe from from whatever we see from the slides I am I'm available to answer any question that can come from there thank you will you uh, will you walk us through the slide so tell us a little bit about single mothers association you are in this slide where we have activities if you can tell us a little bit about about how it came to be and uh, what, it, what it's doing today. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, actually the neighborhood you are staying in was designed by a uh, British uh, during uh, the Second World War. And whatever they were doing in the UK, you know, and remember the housing crisis and they were talking about 
uh, homes for the heroes, people had come from the World War and they needed homes, and uh, the then regeneration of the London. So that was also picked by the <coughs> colonial government here. Africans, uh, for the first time, the British, the colonial government was building house, houses for the natives. But again, just as in South Africa or in uh, <coughs> Zimbabwe, it was segregated. Eastlands was basically for the blacks, and then uh, we have an uh, a way, Westlands was basically for the whites, and we have uh, North Eastern, which was for the Asians, the Indians. So Nairobi was segregated, and therefore uh, the Eastlands of Nairobi, where the Africans were staying, meant that the occupants of these houses were clerks. Then they were, you know. Uh, low cadre workers in the government and for them you know with the low incomes you know security officers and what have you for them to see their families through was difficult and therefore out of maybe five six children two or three will be successful and some of them have even have, are now leading these countries but because of that pressure of dependency then uh, most of Islam remains poor, just probably like Soweto in South Africa. And since much of it is poor, it means that we never got uh, proper education. There was a high rate of school dropout. And with high rate of school dropout, then it means that we also have cases of criminal cases, you know, early pregnancies and uh, such. This is how the single mother's association came, uh, single mother's association of Kenya came to be. In the 70s, when now the young boys were becoming men and young girls were becoming ladies or women, they thought that, yes, we had formed Umeme Sports Club, but now we just need more than just sporting activities. What can we do to empower ourselves? Luckily, uh, Umeme Sports Club had an exchange program with Black United Fund of Texas. And through these exchange programs, the young ladies uh, coming from the visit in Texas decided to form uh, an association. The young men uh, turned to Kawashin. Uh, the young women uh, decided to look into you know knitting, sewing, tailoring and such because those were the lady activities then. Empowered, they decided that now we are going to look into the affairs of our families. With time then, of course, the most important thing was, an accom uh, was accommodation. But as with time, we find that they need more than just accommodation. If you can't uh, afford an accommodation, then probably you need land. Uh, Kenya is a patriarchal society. Uh, we have not been having ladies or women inheriting uh, their parents' property. Even with women, we have life interest. Not till recently, the wife of, or the widow will only depend on life interest but not uh, property uh, inheritance. Property, property inheritance went to, uh, to the children. And for these children, again, you'll find that the male children will, will not think their sisters worthy of this uh, uh, property inheritance because they, they had been expected to, go to, to get married and maybe establish their own families uh, to their in-laws. But of course, the reality is most, some of these marriages are not working. And so we have a problem of, uh, or the new element of single parenthood. This is when now the single mother association of Kenya turned from just talking about uh, employment, uh, uh, labor rights, but they have now come into uh, housing and uh, land rights. And uh, as a uh, current happening is that those who cannot afford uh, or those who are stigmatized their marriage not having worked they are now turning to cremation because for you to go uh, to be buried at your ancestral home as a, as a woman is stigma uh, your children are stigmatized you are also seen as a failure in marriage so most of them are now turning into cremation if not being buried in the city at the cemeteries it is still a taboo, or it's no, it's not. Uh, it's uh, uncommon to find that the natives are being buried in the city. We are expected to be buried in our ancestral home or maybe our marital homes. That is not happening. So this is when we thought that 
land and housing is a big issue. Coming back to the siblings, even the brothers, we have about three, four brothers, and it is expected the last one is the one who is supposed to remain in the house <coughs> or maybe the, 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 the homestead. <coughs> we are seeing that siblings are fighting for their parents' uh, property, and uh, the in family feuds are turning chaotic. Much of the cases, Kenya's Matrimonial Property Act has laws protecting women, access to property. But patriarchal traditions and lack of awareness about their rights leave many women fighting for their rights. Because at times you win a case, a land case, but where do you end up? You, if, if at all you, 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 you win a court case against your in-laws as pertaining, pertaining in land inheritance, where do you go? You go to the inherited, your, your in-laws, because that's where your husband comes from. So at times women decide that instead of being in bad, bad books with their in-laws, they give in into the consent into their land being, uh, you know, grabbed for, for the sake of peace. And uh, in as much as Matrimonial Property Act uh, supported women in, in obtaining, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, this, this uh, land, it still has not uh, been able to override the customary laws. Uh, say, if we are in a, in a, in a uh, polygamous family or marriage and maybe your husband bought a property with the, the elder wife or the first wife, you as a second or third wife you are not entitled to any, any property that your husband you know, acquired with the first wife. So what happens if you, have a, if you have a family? Yet, you know, women do much of the domestic work. As we all know, much of this work is not quantified or co co it is not qualitative in terms of in monetary form. How much do you pay a housewife? So these are the challenges we are getting even with these good laws because there are some overriding uh, principles that make some of these good laws ineffective. And uh, basically because of this, that we are finding that women, in as much as they can occupy, they can own land, they are still not comfortable living where they have acquired this land. Now we come back to housing, because I think housing is critical. We are trying to see that women can own land in this city. But the city council tend to think that public land is their land, and they can privatize it whenever they can. Community Land Act says that our county governments, these are the regional governments, are only custodian of this public land. And whenever they want to privatize this land, then the citizens are required to vote in a referendum. What is happening now, there's very minimum public participation in the privatization of this city council social, social housing. This is where we come out move to the estates, the old estates, you know, these are the poor estates. We try to educate them on uh, the land rights because it's enshrined in our constitution. Some of them, you know, think that whatever we are saying is too good to be true. They don't believe that our constitution actually protects them from such uh, uh, evictions. And that is the work we are doing at the Single Mother's Region of Kenya. We are meeting women and the marginalized, these are the youth and people living with disability. We do uh, film screening. Uh, recently, uh, of, of currently we are, we are using so much of uh, Leilani Farah, the Canadian uh, housing activist. Whatever she has is very good for us because it is informing our communities that actually they have a right and they can stand up against the, go the government uh, to, to demand for the housing rights. So basically that's what I had wanted to share. Thank you. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you so much, Dan. This is like such an, an important work and, and you are there really on the ground with your community uh, and working in like raising uh, awareness and awareness of people's rights and fighting with them. I am also aware that of the, the topic that you raised in the beginning of, of, of this presentation um, in terms of the process of gentrification that you were touching on now. So 
complicating all this uh, scenario for women and women ownership of land and, and, the, and house security after all, um, is the issue that your area is also being affected by a, a process of gentrification that is pushing people from the community out. And I know that Single Mothers Association of Kenya is also taking measures for that and advocating. Can you tell us a little bit about that um, and how it's not raising awareness about women and land ownership in this scenario of the gentrification project that is happening right now? Thank you, Gigi. Uh, well, we are, <coughs> our grandparents were the first renters, the, the original, uh, tenants of this council housing and of course our parents became the second uh, uh, tenants and customarily we have found that we, we, we know with city council as long as you are paying your, your, your rents they have no problem with you and uh, now we as the third generation renters of this housing we, 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 we are seeing actually as we speak to uh, all the states very nice, good, nice houses have been put down. Why? Because they are saying that the land is very close to the city and the population is growing. We can't have housing uh, remaining horizontal. Now housing has to be vertical because the population is big. Then in my community, we are asking, actually we are the second, we are the, we are the, we are, we are the next target. Uh, developers should be coming in and be taken to be resettled and uh, maybe have, you know, 12, 13 stories with high rise, which will need a uh, lift. Who's going to pay for the service charge? Are we going to pay the mortgage plus the service charge, or are we going to be exempted from the service charge? And uh, from the experience we have had, the two estates that have been brought down, the service charge is twice as much as the mortgage. In their shillings, now people are going to pay 30,000, uh, it is not. So in other words, you are just being told you are being displaced. We are telling people that if the government thinks that it wants to save the land, then it should compensate the tenants. Probably 1.5 million Kenya shillings is enough for somebody to go, to go and buy a plot at the suburb at half a million Kenya shillings. And then probably with a million shillings, you can put up a house and maybe uh, you know, a small project. That is agreeable, but that is not happening. And uh, we want to stop that because as we speak, as I've said, two estates are down, they have been broken, uh, the, 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 the tenants are displaced and they have been asked, just like any other Kenyan, to apply for the housing, those, those houses if they so wish. But how do you, how can, you know, if at all these people are rich enough, they will not be living in those houses, they will have already gone to other better houses. But they were still living in those houses because they were affordable. They were social housing. Whatever is coming is not social housing. They call it affordable. But affordable to who? Because uh, we understand internationally that if you are paying more than 30% of your income, then it means you are not living in an affordable abode. Some of our people are sharing houses. Brothers and sisters. Some of them have children. Meaning that we have two generations sharing a house. So in a one bedroom house, with seven, uh, you know, four mature people and two, three children, then you see that is congestion. And of course, with the definition uh, given by the UN of a slum, then it means we are living in slums. Water is never treated, and it, you, we don't get water seven days a week in our housing estates. Water is a problem. Garbage collection is a big problem. You know, we can't even control the uh, feline and canines in our community. If this population is going to go up tenfold, what chaos are we going to have? Traffic jam, you know, it's just going to be chaotic. We are trying to ask the government to, you know, establish new cities. They are, we had those plans of having two, three cities. But again, because of tribalism, somebody thinks that if we go put up a city in another community, then the benefit we are getting by having these people near us, we are going to lose those benefits. These are things like probably farm produ produce. For us living in the city, you know, we get farm produce from around the city. 
most of the landlords are from around the city because that's uh, people are now living in the suburbs they fear that if at all new cities develop people are going to run away from this disorganized city and reading from a germany uh, uh, um, uh, a document called uh, development and cooperation nairobi is among the cities they, they have said that it cannot be rehabilitated the chaos here in is just too much and they were advising uh, <coughs> our city fathers to opt for new cities so indeed as i was saying we are facing a uh, demolition and uh, this uh, is happening without any public participation uh, nairobi is now under military uh, is under military control the governor is behind bars though he was corrupt yes but you're asking why not you know allow the the county assembly elect a new governor why bring in the military to take control of the city and uh, from the video that i shared with you it is said the military were involved in uh, raising the the old estate and the following day when people wanted to start rebuilding they were chased away so that is the kind of situation we are in Gigi. them and then you if you your community members get they get taken out they get um, removed from their houses because they will they will demolish the houses then you say they get a small compensation so what is going to happen to the community members uh, we are being told that uh, you see they're telling us that uh, they're they going to give some of the community members who will be you know they they they, they want we were thinking of decantation, you know, you demolish one side of the estate, put up the structures, and then allow these other co people come in. But the little compensation that people are being given cannot enable them to rent elsewhere for a year or two. And from the amount they're being given, they're being asked to leave half of that amount as the deposit for the housing that is going to be created. That leaves you with about three, 300,000 Kenya shillings that is about uh, divide by 100 to get the amount in dollars about 3,000 uh, US dollars for to you to for survive with, uh, for a year or two because wow. you know <laughs> you know with the building you can never say that you are certain that within a year you'll have uh, you'll have put up structures we, you know we have rain we have the COVID so even the, 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 the exercise is prolonged and then you're asked being asked to put down a deposit for a property that you probably believe that most community members are not able to afford paying forward of course they're telling you that knowing that you cannot accept to give half of that amount because uh, you know you how do you serve your mortgage we have words like foreclosure which you have started learning about nobody is talking to us about foreclosure we have you know service charge nobody's talking to, about, uh, to us about service charge you see so it is it is terrible whatever they're offering is too little and it is not being offered by the government but by these developers not numbered and the ones who, so there's no consistency with what the government is saying the minister of house is saying a the county government is saying b and you know the developer is saying c so there's nothing nothing binding on on these uh, uh agreements or memorandum of under and this is this is happening now it's do you say you're next in, in line for the demolishment and for the demolishing and that that is happening now and you, because you were saying you were trying to delay it until at least after the elections are you succeeding in in by doing this questioning's delay uh, at least to see if something changes after election yes yes we are trying to see that uh, we are we are actually the person who is leading uh, pushing people out is our councillor that we call the member of county assembly. She's the one moving around telling people a section of the estate that you prepare uh, by the by 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 August. We you people need to be moving out. And for us, what we are doing is we are going to the National Land Commission to stop this. We are trying to ask uh, the courts to to you know to to ensure that proper public participation is done. And we are also trying to get. Uh, other neighboring states to help us sign a petition
to be sent to the East African court. And uh, we hope that uh, we, these measures, at least we slow down this, uh, the speed that uh, uh, our, our, our councillors, uh, not just our councillors, uh, but uh, even other state councillors seems to be. You know, these are people who used to uh, kickbacks. Only one councillor is, is siding with, the, with, with this community. And uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting community. It's called Jericho, and uh, there are two, Jericho and Jerusalem, and these were built by the Israelis. So the councillor is trying to get the community to petition the Israeli government to see whether they can bring in the kibbutz style of housing. Mm -hmm. okay. Wow, that's a lot of work. Um, as I say to you always, Daniel, your, your work, the work of Single Mothers Association of Kenya is such an inspiration for all of us because you you are tireless advocates for the right of your community and you really get in there and uh, get your hands dirty, as we say, with the work. And well, let's keep let's keep looking. Let's keep let's keep following what's happening in your in your area. This is a very concerning situation. But thank you so much for sharing with us and sharing the extent to which your organization which uh, defends the rights of young women and also works so tirelessly with memory and documentation the extent to which you guys are going to get a handle of the situation and try to change something for your community so thank you so much for sharing with us thanks for being here today um, this will be available for every member and also people that are not members to to view and then we hope that this gets we'll share it also widely in our networks Thank you so much. Thank you. Have, a, have a great day and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, it's a pleasure. And thank you, Gloria. Bye. bye. Thank you very much. That was, okay, bye. 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 bye.